I have always had a fascination with um, mech suits, with exoskeletons, mech suits, things like that, powered suits. They're commonly depicted in science fiction, but they have real world application. The military is using them, manufacturing plants are using them. Um, I've always wanted to find one, and, but I could never find any any toy manufacturer that makes their own. So I thought I'd go ahead and just make one on my own. And this was the end process. This is my uh, 1 12th scale custom exoskeleton, mech suit, power suit, whatever you want to call it. And it turned out really well. I was heavily influenced by you know, some of the sci-fi movies um, and, and comic books, things like that. Uh, here's some a couple of quick shots of me just assembling some joints and drilling some holes and just putting together some of the bits and pieces. Every, every joint on the figure articulates. Um, I don't actually know how many articulating points there are on this thing. But there's, there's a lot. You can see in the back some of the piping. I don't know where that large black piping came from. I just found it in a box of just extra bits. And then the smaller ones, the black ones, are just twist ties that come with extra figures that I just save, throw them in a bag. You can see that even with the suit on, the exoskeleton, it does not limit articulation in any way. And it sticks with her. Um, you can see some of the Velcro straps that simulate the buckles and the, the straps like on, a, on, a, on a sci-fi or it would be a real suit. Uh, here I am just kind of doing some basic priming. Um, that blue tape is taping off the, the velcro straps that'll keep it more secure. Uh, I've done priming, I've done some weathering, sealed it off with a top coat and here's the here's the exoskeleton right next to the figure. And I'll go ahead and get her suited up. Uh, there's another velcro strap in the back that once you slide her into the suit it just keeps it together. You can see some of the piping and weathering on the on the joints. Her foot just slides into the, the boot right there and there's some one or two millimeter uh, foam sheet that's actually glued on there too so it kind of makes it really snug when you when you put the foot in. It doesn't wiggle around at all. And then I've got her belts, the belt buckles, the belts and buckles uh, securing the leg uh, to the rest of the frame. And then it's the basic same concept for the arms. Uh, you know, she sits into the, it slides into the, the Velcro belt buckles, and there's actually a joystick on each hand, on each arm, that she holds onto, that she can slide onto, and keeps the arm pretty secure. Uh, you can see some of the weaponry right there. I've got these. I've made this flamethrower that has its own canister that can actually uh, secure to the back of the flamethrower. This flamethrower turned out really good. I like how I was able to finally heat the, the styrene rod to make it bend and look like it's an actual, you know, the ignition uh, tubing. And then it slides into this, like, double railing system that I have on there. And so the, the flamethrower and the machine gun, I'll show in a second, for the other arm are actually interchangeable. You could put them on whichever side you want. I wish I would have done that with the missile launcher, uh, but I had already built the missile launcher up before I got the idea to make the, the machine gun and the flamethrower modular. So the, if I had to go back and do it again, I would, I would, I would make the missile launcher modular to be removed, uh, as well as be able to rotate. I can't rotate it. Um, I'll probably do three more of these type of suits, uh, just because I want to get one team of this together. And you can see it slides in right there, and also it has its own uh, removable uh, double drum magazine. You can just slide right on as well. But here's the whole figure all together. Uh, fully suited up. I'd hate to be downrange of this person uh, with a missile launcher, a flamethrower, and a double-barreled machine gun. Um, you can see the, the demonstration of the articulation. You know, her arms can move all the way up, her legs still bend, elbows still bend, uh, still can kick forward, still can kick back. Doesn't limit it at all. I mean, she's still fully posable, which is one of the things that I always go for in all my builds. I don't like to limit posability at all, whether it's a a custom figure or uh, something like this, like a suit. Here, just demonstrating how the figure can still run and move in all the directions, and the, the suit itself moves with it. it. Took a little figuring out how to get this to do correctly, but it, it worked out in the end. Um, just kind of putting her arms back down, showing some additional articulation, and then I think I'll go ahead and bend her arms up, and that's the kind of way she'll be displayed, just to kind of demonstrate the, the firepower. Um, I think that looks pretty cool right there. Pretty happy with how that turned out. Um, and then lastly here, I will show that the uh, the missiles do are removable and can be put in place. But 
they sit snugly as well, and I can actually pick up the figure by a missile and kind of shake it around and they won't pop out. Um, that turned out really well, how well they sit in there. But yeah, this is a full complete uh, 112 scale custom build uh, mech exosuit. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Uh, it was a smaller project, so I got it done a lot quicker. I uh, kind of want to do three more, like I mentioned again. But, uh, we'll see how that goes. Here's one last demonstration of the, the scale. So it scales real well with Valiverse and Classified. And the cool thing about this exoskeleton is that you can put it uh, any three of these figures as long as you remove their their guns and their holsters. Uh, it, it, uh, it will fit any 112 scale figure. But thank you so much for watching, and I uh, hope you have a good weekend.